All right, folks, <clears throat> my name is Shanae Jones. I'm your resident certified sex coach. And this is a continuation into our series talking about common sexual concerns that men and women face. Um, again, this is high level, very generic, probably won't touch on everything that you've experienced or that you've gone through, but it's a way to start the dialogue so that we can, you know, just to have the conversation. Like, I'm, it's not just me that has this concern, this problem. You know, sex is something that is much more talked about than it was in the past, but not so much that a lot of us don't suffer in silence and suffer through through shame and with shame that we don't proactively decide to help ourselves and better ourselves to become better sexual people. You know, we go to the gym, uh, we follow diet trends, we do all stuff, but when it comes to figuring out how to be a better sexual person, we don't really do it. And there's a concept that we'll talk about more called sexual intelligence. It's just like you've heard of your, your IQ and your EQ, your emotional intelligence, your sexual intelligence is along the same lines, getting to know you as a person, getting to know you as a sexual being so that you can understand what you enjoy and so that you can relay and reflect that information to your partner so that everybody that's involved is having great sex. And why would you want to have sex if it's bad? This is why people stop having sex because they don't get what they want out of it. So speaking of this, low or no sexual desire. Now, it happens. It happens to all of us. You know, there are some of those who, you know, just are like bunnies. It, it doesn't matter what you do, what you say. They're never tired. They never have a headache, you know. But there are moments for most of us where there are hills and valleys. And, you know, sometimes, especially when we're in those valleys, we need to figure out why and what we can do to re-energize that, that sexual momentum. So here are some common reasons for low or no sexual desire in men. Uh, sexual desire is the frequency in which you, well, let me explain it first, the definition. Sexual desire is the frequency in which you want to have sex, those sexual urges, those natural sexual urges. And when you have a low desire, that low desire is really relative to the person. So again, if you're that bunny and you went from wanting to have sex every day to only wanting to have sex once a week, your sex drive is still on a different plane than that somebody who is used to having sex once a week and now it's gone down to once every few months. So don't compare your situation to somebody else's. What you really want to do is focus on where you're comfortable and where your range ideally would be. And then we can try to think about those things that could be impacting it. So, you know, it's hard to say, okay, well, what are other men my age doing? It's, it's you, it's you, you're comparing yourself to maybe when you were younger and you had a, a, a different drive and now you're older and you're feeling the, the pressures of adulthood, maybe. You, you you can't come you're not the same person as you were back then you're not you're never going to be that 18 year old 19 year old horny toad that just wants to jump and pounce on everything desire changes over time and circumstance you have to consider yourself as a sexual person but as a person within the state of your current circumstances. Have you totally lost the urge to have sex or is sex just being put on the back burner because of so many other things that are going on, all of these other competing priorities? So here are some of the most common concerns for men to think about that might be impacting your, your sex drive. Uh, low testosterone is, you know, often a culprit. So it's very important for guys to go to the doctor. I know a lot of you are very stubborn in that regard, but it's important to go to the doctor and it's important to get your testosterone levels tested as well as 
all your other health issues, making sure that those are being properly addressed as well as, you know, diet and exercise and general overall health. Uh, you could be impacted by psychological issues. You know, do you have some type of depression or some type of inner struggle that may perhaps require you to go speak to a therapist or um, a certified licensed counselor uh, that can help you with those mental issues. It could also be physiological. Like, are you suffering from, you know, self-esteem issues? Uh, do you question whether or not your partner has lost, you know, an attraction for you? Are you, are you, are you clouding your head with things that are perceived, but can't or haven't been validated perhaps? Are you putting too much pressure on yourself? You know, do you have an expectation to, to be this man? And if you're not performing at this level, then you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And that, that pressure can be devastating um, a lot of times. Uh, you might be questioning whether or not you're normal, you know, Yes, this is where we get into these conversations about a lot of us go through the same series of emotions, the same sequences of events, the same family contributions to our mental health, our physical health. But if we don't pay attention to it, then we're never going to put ourselves in a position to be able to effectively address it. You know, it could be also influenced by issues in your relationship, you know. Are, are things emotionally abusive? Do you fight about money or family or kids? Or, you know, is there a general power struggle? Because, you know, when a man is challenged in certain instances and, you know, isn't held in that position or he's regarded as, you know, I am the man of the household, I am taking care of things. And if there is that, shift in power and balance where, you know, the, the woman is taking care of the, the finances and the house and the kids, that dynamic, which does exist, can easily create problems. Uh, do you have performance concerns? Like, again, men tend to focus on the performance versus the pleasure of sex. You know, sex is one of those things that if we could practice mindfulness, where we're more concerned about being in the moment and creating that sense of pleasure versus am I going to make her come or am I going to come or how long is it going to take or does it feel good to her and having all of these things in your head at the time when you're supposed to be just in the moment we could do ourselves so much better if we just focus on pleasure versus performance again we have body image issues you know maybe you're not in the same shape Maybe you want to work out, but, you know, you have to get those things that are blocking you, you know, out of the way so that you can concentrate. Okay, well, if you if you're not happy with your belly, then go to the gym, work out, eat better. You know, there are things that you need to do for yourself. Your situation doesn't change by itself. You have to be the one to affect the change, a positive change, if you want to have a difference in your life. Uh, there could be intimacy issues. And for those of you who pay any attention to me, intimacy and sex are two different things. You can be intimate with a person without being sexually engaged. Intimacy is sharing that closeness and being able to have that deeper connection. And if that intimacy isn't there, then, you know, sometimes the, the desire for sex isn't there. Being overly tired or stressed or having, again, all these outside influences, they can impact you. And if you don't manage stress, stress is another one of those things that will have a physical effect on your health. You have to be able to take care of it because if you don't, all of these things, they create compounding issues that you have to be able to take care of in order to take care of yourself. Then there's just also sexual ignorance. You know, 
there's a lot that has happened. The internet has exposed us to a lot of things. And sometimes we question our ability. Uh, we question our skill. But we also question the, the fact that you may not know your partner as well as you perhaps should. And you have to put yourself, you have to be a student. You have to be a student of pleasure. You have to learn how to ask the questions and touch in the right places and, and be willing to explore positions and locations and all kinds of stuff. So be a student of, of sex and intimacy with your partner. How can you resolve most of these issues? First of all, let's eliminate any medical possibilities, right? Uh, if it is low testosterone, if it is diabetes, if it is medicine, because if you have your own certain medicines, even over-the-counter medicines, they can interact with your sex drive. You can, they can impair your desire. You know, it it's possible. So definitely talk to your doctors to make sure that you are doing the research about what it is that you're putting in your body and how it is affecting you. You can also work on resolving your relationship issues if that is where the driver is. You know, work on that communication, work on building that partnership. And when you can reduce and eliminate a lot of the external stresses, then the desire to have sex comes back. You know, you're not angry and mad at each other all the time and you're not just being present. You know, you're you're there in each other's space, but not connecting and not communicating. If, if that is your situation, you have to build bridges and you have to be open to communicating in a way that will flip the situation because that's what you ultimately want. You ultimately want to eliminate all of the things that are negative to your space and to your health and, and get those in order, right? Also, you can try to introduce other external arousal. So porn is a good form of entertainment. It is not a teaching tool. Those people are actors. They get paid. Most of them are actors. They get paid. But still, it's not a teaching tool. Although you can, you can learn some new tricks and flavors. Or, hey, I didn't know people did that. But it's the expectations that come with it. Or should I be as big? Or should I last as long? Or should I be able to flip or do... Take it for entertainment and take it for that moment where it just gets you a little bit worked up because you're watching, you're practicing that voyeurism where you're watching somebody else engage in a sexual act. You know, a good thing, we talked about this before, go to a strip club together, you know, do something where you're as a, a couple and as a partner, as partners doing something that's sexual. I went with um, my boyfriend to... Uh, her name is her Instagram is Sugar Brown Comedies, and she does this like erotic strip tease type of thing. But it's funny and it's couples based. And if you get a chance, look her up. She the show was actually very good. We actually had to learn how to do a strip tease. But that type of outing could be something that we're like, oh, okay, well, this was interesting. You know, you could think about you know other alternatives, phone sex sexting with your partner, you know, don't cheat. This is not the opportunity to cheat. I'm not condoning any of that. I'm asking you to work with your significant other to reduce, remove, and resolve anything that could be in your way. So as a real world example, I have a friend who is married. They have kids. They are good partners. They, you know, raise their kids, but I talk to him I'm like as a coach, you know, sometimes it might be inappropriate to ask people about their sex lives, but I figure this is what I do. So I'm asking like, you know, when was, have you slept with your wife? When was the last time you slept with your wife? And it's more, he jokes it off. He laughs it off, but a sexless marriage is one where you're considered to have sex less than four times a year. If that's your situation, then you're technically considered in a sexless marriage. People can stay together for all kinds of reasons. The kids got a house together, cheaper to keeper, 
whatever it is. But why would you want to be in a position where you are sleeping or communicating or partnering with somebody on a regular basis for years and years and not share that intimacy, not share that love and connection and not share that physical drive and desire for each other. There, there are ways around it. You just have to be grown enough to fix it and work on it and be, be willing to make sex just as important as anything else in your life. So that's my spill on that. Um, we're going to continue on with the, the, the next series. Um, low desire and again unless medically attributed is all up here and in here so if you fix these two places down there will go trust me all right we're going to move on to the next my name is shanae jones i am your resident certified sex coach and you can reach me across all social media at d-o-y-o-u-k-n-k-y and i will see you again Thank you so much for your support.